she's just about one of the prettiest 40 footers you will ever see. It's just gorgeous. You have an exquisite 41 foot fiberglass boat that's going to far outlast your grandchildren. This is like turning the clock back in time. If there were room in the Metropolitan Museum, you could hang this puppy in there. And uh, people would come from far and wide. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. Hey, Captain. Hey, Randy. Where are you? Over here. I'm up here checking out a blue hull here. There's supposed to be a a, a blue hull boat in here that we got to find. There's so many blue boats. Isn't, that, isn't this what happened to uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> blue is very hot right now. This is sort of Wonderland, isn't it? Look at, oh, that's a gorgeous Morris right here. And, ah! Oh. This is it? That's it. Look at the keel. That keel is left over from the wooden boat days the scantlings down there and so forth, they had to build a great big long keel on the boat. And uh, they usually had glued a big chunk of lead to it. And I think when they made these, that the lead went inside. But this is a fiberglass boat. This is designed by Phil Rhodes and in conjunction with William Garden. Post-war, uh, they were having a hard time finding woodworkers and fiberglass was just creeping into the picture, right? And so there was a company called Coleman Boat Company out on the West Coast that uh, wanted to build uh, some, some boats, a big fiberglass boat. About 1956, uh, William Garden and Rhodes got together as a joint effort and they came up with this design. Now what's sort of fun about this is back in these days, they had no idea how to build a fiberglass boat. We've talked about this a little bit before, but the glass could be sometimes like that in the hull sections. This particular boat, uh, Rhodes designed a little more carefully as far as the hull structure was concerned. He made the hull a little thinner, hoping to make it a little lighter. These boats came out around 18,000 pounds with about 6,000 pounds or so of lead in them. Uh, but what they made up for in the smaller ballast was the much larger keel. This is called a Pearson 41. Pearson bought the molds from a company called Aero Marine Plastics, which was the old Coleman Boat Company. And they went under and they, they sold off all their stuff except for uh, th what was then called the Bounty 2 molds. And they took this mold and built this hull. They changed it just a little bit. They moved the engine placement from in front of the companionway to behind the companionway and they moved the spar back and they ended up building about 50 of these. She's narrow beamed compared to today's boats. Yep. Um, she's short on the waterline, only 28 feet on the waterline. And of course, she has the added bonus of being... A Rhodes? A Rhodes. A Rhodes what? Y'all. Uh... Yeah. This is, we believe, hull number one. The owner found this boat wilting somewhere and so he brought it up to Hinkley two years later and at a published number, I believe, of in excess of one million dollars. Wow. You have an exquisite 41-foot Rhodes fiberglass boat that's going to far outlast your grandchildren. They stripped the whole boat out when they got it there, took it right back to the, the hull. Everything was gone. We can take a look down inside here. Yeah, you want yeah, to take a look out. down the side of her? What color is the bottom? <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice white one, actually. Well, this is a primer coat. Okay. And it's got two or three of these uh, jobs on here. It looks like a white bottom. This is set this way, so if somebody comes alongside, they want to own this boat for themselves, they'll have their choice of color. Can you notice the mirror image? I mean, you can, I don't know. Look, can you read that in, in the reflection? <laughs> Pretty much. When they went through the boat, they pulled out a bunch of the through hulls in the boat. Okay. And they noticed that the layup looked awfully thin. Well, it turned out Rhodes decided he'd make this hull originally thinner than the other boats, so it'd be lighter and faster. At Hinkley's, they said, we think this is a little th thin layup. Let's fix that. So they've put two layers of, of um, cloth 
on the outside of this hull. Oh, so added more fiberglass. Wow. So there's two layers of that on here, <laughs> glassed over, and then fared and fared and fared and sanded and fared. It's an incredible job. And now they have a really thick, really solid hull structure. Let's move on down the line here. I know when you first took a look at this boat, you were kind of dazzled by the length of the keel. Yeah, and the now, depth, and it's just big and beefy. This is just uh, old wooden boat design work, okay? And this is how they thought the boat should look back then. If you look forward here, you can still see it's quite cut away. This is not by any means a full keel, is it? No. She has a gudgeon hung rudder aft. And, you know, we look at these all the time. These have all been burnished and polished up by Hinckley. This whole rudder system has all been stripped down and uh, refared and reglassed. Uh, so it's solid as can be right now. We have a max prop in here, a feathering prop. These things are great when they go in reverse. You get, a f you get the full load of a real propeller as though you were going forward. So you're getting the full bite out of a big propeller. Through hull fittings. Look at that. I can't, even, I can't even feel that going over there. They're minimal. So how do you like the bilges and the Oh, the shape? bilges are very slack. This is old wooden boat slack bilge design. This is the, considered the garboard area of the boat. Right. This is between the, the, in, the keel and, and where the planks start to go up. You can't just come up like a new modern boat to a right angle, can you? No. So this is a structural piece. We've got a nice dynaplate here. Probably got a single sideband on board. I think that's more than a grounding plate. Yeah, for real electronics, then they go to a dynaplate, which has those micro balloons immersed in a, in a resin that's then glued to the bottom, and it gives you an enormous amount of of um, copper surface area. Yeah. Surface area, thank you. Yeah. So this hull is pretty sweet. I'm sure they've long boarded it, which is a way of taking a big long piece of, of wood with some sandpaper on it to really get it fair. Yep. If you try to sand this like this, you're gonna have a hollow and a high spot and hollow. So you use a long board and you just go boom, boom, boom. What do you think? Should we take a look at the top side? Yeah, let's go check it let's out. Let's go look it out. We love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're gonna get recommended to more people and so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Are your feet clean? This is like turning the clock back in time. There's the special hole I love to see on these boats. That's the yaw hole? That's the yaw hole. <laughs> and you put the little mizzen in there and you suddenly become a yaw. Take it out and you're just a plain old sloop. Um, so she's got two masts, main, mizzen, the yaw. We have self-tailing winches. Uh, primary winches right up by your knee there. That's a uh, Lumar 50s. And, and aft here, we have a Lumar uh, 45. Uh, right here by my knee, we have your bilge pump. All the new lifelines. They're all wire exposed, no plastic coating on them. This is by new standards for racing. Here's a, uh, a chain plate for part of the mizzen rigging, just one of them. And there's two more back here. And then you see right after that, there's a great big chain plate. That's for the one of the backstay splits. There's one on the other side here that uh, is hooked up to a hydraulic Vang, and we've seen that before, haven't we? Yeah. With the handle, you pump it up, and uh, it goes up to probably a block, and and pull the mast right down and put it in a good trim. A lot of things they did keep. A lot of the old fittings. This is the old original track. I know that for sure. These are the old original cars right here, that uh, you know, give it a, a slight twist on the uh, knob and it'll unscrew. Here's an old turning block right here. This is kind of fun to see. And just see, there's a pin on the back of this. I don't know if you can see that. I can pull that pin and lift that up. Isn't that a nice little fitting right there? And it's still got some of the original uh, patent on it. Uh, patina? We go with patina, yeah. A little patina. You like the patina. And somebody has polished up the, the shiv in there because that, that turns freely. So your jib sheet will come back to a block here, come here, turn, and go right back up to your um, primary jib sheet there. And there's a, a garage here, which is very clean. You can see some of the massive layup down there from the original build on the boat. These look like old Wilcox Crittenden bronze cleats. Just great big perfect cleats, that's all. And the same matching fittings on the transom. And look down in the center of the transom and you'll see a nice old stern light. They've left the uh, binnacle uh, clear. This is a little dusty right now. 
uh, but it's a, a Constellation, Danforth Constellation Compass, and a nice old binnacle. It's sort of fun that they've kept some of these things like this, just to maintain some of the flavor of the boat. Uh, got a Raymarine touchscreen. I'm holding on to a gorgeous, gorgeous wheel. This is, uh, you're a wood guy. What kind of wood do you think that is? Is that a, uh, a walnut or something, maybe? Uh, it looks lighter than walnut. I don't lighter know. Lighter than walnut? Yeah. Well, it's gorgeous anyway. Now take a look up toward the bow here. Uh, 41 foot boat. I don't know, maybe it's the building that, that makes it feel compact, but it's just a really long way up there for 41 feet, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but she's so slender too. This is not a chubby boat. Is this uh, instrument display on top of the companionway new? Everything you see on here yeah. is new. I was thinking this whole box assembly would be new, right? That would. Oh, this bo this box is new. Yes. Yeah. All new Ray Marine instruments. We're back in old school days where you had big lockers to put your sails. Now, this is a pretty big locker right here. It's got uh, some uh, uh, dock lines in here and a big fender, but. Back then, this is only a 41-foot boat, so you could put a, oh, half of your sail complement in this locker and probably the other half over there. And for a yaw, you might have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sails maybe, a couple of spinnakers, and there's plenty of room in there. Now, here's the other fun thing. What do we like about, what does Hinkley usually do with their hatches? See? Oh, oh, the varnish. The varnish, right. you see? Now, what do they always do too? Oh, yeah. <gasps> They didn't varnish. They that didn't guy, varnish. That it. guy didn't show for work that day. Here's a little detail you might like. Ah, the drink holder? Yeah. Well, we see this on a lot of boats. This is nice because it actually has the extra little groove there for the coffee that. cups. Another big locker filled with sail lines and so on. And again, we can see down here there's a panel with, uh, with cleats on it here that will open up and give you access to part of the engine. Nice long cockpit seats. Very tall. This is... Hinkley esque too. I don't know what they were originally, but uh, the uh, cockpit combing here is nice. I'm pretty well stayed in here, right? And uh, if I wanted to lie down, what do you think? Ah, oh. pretty good. So lots of room, and I'm sure he's got some uh, cockpit cushions here too, as well, that would uh, keep everything together. So, what do you say? You want to take a look forward? Yeah, let's go check it out. Nice clean foredeck. And you probably noticed as you walked up here how wide the side decks are on board here. Yeah. We have a, a nice capstan here, uh, windlass from, uh, oh, whose is this? This is a Lumar as well. Everything's Lumar on here with an up and down switch uh, for you so you don't have to work too hard. And a little CQR on a single roller. And I'm going to guess that's almost like a 30 pound CQR, not a very big one. It's not a very big boat. Again, the hawse, the uh, chocks here are all original too. So we have a deck wash down here with complete with a, a handle here. Also notice that we have two brand new hatches. Now, these are Bomars again, nice aluminum frames with uh, translucent darkened glass. Uh, two derays and they've got these cute little wind vents on here. This is going to come down to the head, and the other one will just be help flow of air into the main cabin. This is where the deck rises up. Yep. Uh, generally referred to as a dog house on a boat. As a result, you have good headroom right in this area, and then I think we're going to find that it squeezes down a little bit. You put up with a few things when you want antiquity, right? It's not going to be like getting into a Cadillac Suburban or something. But the reward is, when you row away from this boat in your dinghy, and you look back on it, your little heart is going to go like that. So, what do you say we take a look below? Okay, Randy. Yeah. Once again, I'm going to ask you to come on down and take a look at this boat. Oh, thanks. In the old days, you would have had sort of probably for mica bulkheads and um, I don't know what for countertops and, and maybe some uh, unvarnished teak lockers. But now you've got a nice settee on the starboard side. A very nice U-shaped settee on the on the uh, port side, uh, complete with a fold-out table. And I just just fiddled with this a second ago. Look how cool this is! I'm just opening that that lid up, and there's there's no sliders for it. Oh wow! There's no support the, under there. The hinges just support it. So you can see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six people around that pretty nicely. And uh, when you're finished with it, just fold it up. It's a good sea berth on that on that uh, over at 
by the backrest there, yep. as is what I'm sitting on right now. And this has uh, special um, storage behind here. So we've got a lot of little good storage hidden in there behind the cushions. So one thing I'm seeing that we have never seen before. That is? A beautiful custom floor protecting piece of canvas work. Oh, it's pretty nice. The sea dog's standing on it right now. I can get that up easy peasy, just like bingo. <laughs> what do you think? Wow. Huh? No wonder they covered it. Look at that. Now that little canvas cover was, was pre-cut and form fitted, as we noticed, right to this whole floor. You wanna see if we can see our builds. Think we can find a build down here? Pop up this little board here, and there's the water tank supply with uh, sensors probably uh, telling you how deep the water is. Yeah. What they've done here, here's a nice touch. The reason these just don't pop out with your fingernails, they put a little strip of rubber along here. So it actually wedges itself in there. When I put this down, now it's in there. Oh, tons of storage underneath the seats. Um, I noticed the push button. Uh... They got the same push button design we've seen before. We really like those. This is one of the smaller <laughs> tables we've ever seen, isn't it? We've got all the radio equipment you need. Your repeater Raytheon, or Ray, Ray Marine uh, devices, uh, your VHF, I think this is a single sideband up here, and uh, oh, a whole series of light switches for the cabin. Yeah, you don't normally like this kind of orientation, right? Well, not my favorite, generally speaking, but there is a plus to this. We always <laughs> like to think positively. Um, first of all, this bunk is pretty long, so I may not be sitting on the feet of somebody sleeping here, but you can also see the helmsman. And that's very nice. So somebody's up there steering. Uh, you can check the screen down here. Now they have a repeat series up there so that you can talk to one another. You've got a nice little chart table area here that uh, takes, as they have on this boat, nice little charts. So uh, I don't know how far afield this boat went, but here, well, this is US chart number one. Chart number one is actually not a chart. This is a book that will tell you all about everything you read on a chart. You want to know what a buoy is or what a waterway looks like? It's all right here. U.S. chart number one. Everybody should have one on board. Good hand grips everywhere. Uh, on this boat, uh, in this section, we don't have the overheads, which I really would like to see, but will survive because you got these drip uh, sections here, often referred to as drip uh, rails, that will catch any moisture that might come off the window and run it away. Um, but. We can get that here, pretty narrow boat. Here in a very nice galley, 41 footer, old school stuff. We've got a basic two burner stove and you can do a lot of cooking with two burners, a small one, a great big fast burner and a nice uh, Rigo oven door there. Ooh, really nice drawers with the uh, dovetailed um, build to it. And it's almost on rollers. Look at that, it goes right in and sucks itself back in. And then you lock it with the little push buttons. Uh, we're surrounded with wood. It's just glorious. And we have food storage here. And, oh, oh, my. you know, no matter how much you pay for a boat, you still get hungry at sea. And another, again, nice sliding uh, uh, doors on these on these lockers. It's just beautifully done. Every, the, the, the finish is fabulous. And these are all vented. This is the best sink we've seen, I think, anywhere. Yeah. And it has the handheld, you know, uh, water faucet and deep. Here's a question for us. Sometimes they used to put a little vent to the water tanks. Oh, yeah. So when you topped off the water tanks, even though it would fill up the tank down the bilge, the water would try to run up through an overflow and it would come out here in the sink. That could be that, or there could be a, a, a fresh water uh, pump here. Is you have this electrical panel in here. What do we think about that? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, we don't really love it so close to uh, the companionway where there'd be water splashing potentially. I know. I don't know why they do that and why they can't figure out a better way to do that. But historically, I think they did it because the engine's down there, the batteries are down there. It's a short run for the wiring. And here is the rest of the galley. And we have a pretty large refrigeration section here. Oh, oh my God. Oh. These guys even drink the cheap stuff. Again, the other side to it. So this is pretty commodious. Mr. Ubiquitous here. Boom. Do you know the name of this boat? Uh, I don't remember it, yes. I... Sinisher. Sinisher, yeah. What does that mean? A sinisher is a place or a thing or rather a thing or a person that is in the center of everything. <laughs> now, 
this boat is sort of that when it pulls into a harbor, it's going to be the sinecure of that harbor, isn't it? Beneath this ladder, we have an engine room, and there's one pickup here that's kind of cool, and we'll have to take a little closer look to find out why we're opening just this section. There's probably something quick and easy to get to, right. but we have to pull a couple of pins here and get this ladder up. And here's a Yanmar 45 horsepower diesel. Here's your Raycor filter off on the starboard side down there. Do you see that? Yep. And you've got a... That raw water intake looks uh, original. Yes, that is original. Good eye. And here's an oil dipstick for you right here. That's going to be attached to the cap, I'm pretty certain. Yeah. And... Uh, your oil filter there. And check your belts. And it's got the nice serpentine belt, right, that will be very quiet and translate all the power out of the machine to the various devices. This is where the doghouse ends, so oh, you're going to have see. to come down just a few inches. Yeah. And you recognize that you're you're probably now in about... Oh, six foot headroom, maybe even five, twelve. I'm going to step behind here so you can get a good shot of the head. Uh, it's nicely done. Again, this is old school, small, but uh, you'll be wedged inside there, right? Oh, yeah. And look at the uh, wood on the sink top. You see that wood there? Oh, it's very That handsome. counter? Yeah. That used to be the floor in this boat. When they ripped out the flooring, they salvaged some of the wood. Huh. And they refinished it, glued it together, and smacked it into the head. Now, you mentioned another word to me. What about the head? Oh, it has a new plinth in it. What is a plinth? <laughs> <laughs> By definition, a plinth is supposedly the supporting structure for statues and so forth, an underlayment. Uh -huh. And in this case, what they're referring to is right down there uh, underneath your feet where the, the shower drain goes, and that whole pan down there is all new. We're up in the forward cabin, and once again, uh, though the, the cabin sides and things don't tell you that you have uh, all this headroom down here, I have six foot two headroom. I'm going to move these over just a little bit because these are shroud rollers. Do you know what those are? I do. Since, well, good. Do you I think happen, everybody else does? I happen to own some. <laughs> these oh. go up on the, on the rigging and you snap it right around the shroud as it goes up, the, up to the mast and then you tape it shut here. And these are not tight on the rigging, but they will roll. So when, when you jive the boat and the, and the jib sheet comes around, it won't hang up on the rigging. These are sort of narrow little bunks. Is Let's there see. a filler piece here? Uh, right here, yes, there is. And it's right beside me over on this side. It's a big filler. Oh, wow. So we're going to have a big V-berth king-size bunk here. These old bronze port lights. Uh, look at that. Beautiful. Everything, everything works so nicely. See that? There's no snapping, anything, no hardware. And they've, they've replaced the, the rubber inside here, the gasketing. I'm going to just do a quick hop into this bunk. Do you think I should? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to take my shoes measure, off. The measuring stick works out. I'm going to take my shoes off. And look what I got here. Ta-da! Oh, yeah, finally. We're going to get comfy. I may not get out of this bunk. And we could use a little handhold here. So this is pretty comfortable, and I would, I could even get myself, you know, all squirreled into this thing, and we could, we could go to Bermuda now. So Rende, thanks for stopping by. All right. Once again, I send you on your way. Well, Randy, we've had another great day of boat looking, and now we're wrapping it up. That was a day for the captain right now, seeing that that uh, Pearson 41 1965 fiberglass remake. Holy Toledo, everything was perfect, everything was brand new, except a few little touches they left, which was kind of the fun part. It was almost like discovering the various uh, cleats and things. And, and, and of course, especially when you opened the hatch, and there was the old hatch from, oh, six, what's that, 55 years ago. You know, it was a beautiful boat, uh, a, a Phil Rose design, who had one of the best eyes for a pretty sweeping shear on a boat. And when you see this boat, if she were on the anchorage out there, people would just stop and stare at it. They'd say, what is that thing? And especially since she has two masts. Bingo. Uh, love that boat. Love the work that was done on it. I know you would have liked to have a little more headroom in the boat, but other than that, she was perfect. I think we should probably rate that boat. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That boat is a floater. She has been immaculately rebuilt by the Henry R. Hinckley Company. Apparently the owner went in, into seven figures of expense for this boat. Oof. And it shows though. I'm going to give her another 15 right away on top of the 10. And on top of that, for saving this boat for antiquity, another 10 that's still. So we're going 35 on this boat. What do you think? That seems about right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the boat. And uh, 
Start saving today for your own. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much. You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs> <laughs>